Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the British Embassy where we have an extraordinary day of autonomous systems, uh, whether air systems, ground systems, sea systems, small systems, big systems. And we have with us Steve Whitby, uh, who is with uh, Airbus Defense and Space. Uh, you're the man who's the head of marketing for the Zephyr system. Yes. Extraordinary, uh, very unique uh, system originally developed by Kinetic. Uh, for those of us, uh, for the viewers who, to know, that is the, uh, the uh, commercialized, the privatized version of Dero, which was the defense uh, engineering and research establishment, uh, which was uh, uh, just one of the world's leading, that Britain's DARPA, if you will. Yes. Uh, Steve, you guys acquired this a few years ago from, from Kinetic. You guys have been investing heavily in it. Tell us a little bit about what Zephyr is and why it's unique from your guys' standpoint. Well, what we've looked at was uh, we've taken it from just being a pure platform that could do certain things from an, aer an aerobatic sort of situation into what does the market want from its capabilities. So what we've done is we've invested money into improving the solar cell technology. We've made it lighter. We've made it slightly bigger. And we've been able now to invest in different types of payload that can give you the capabilities. So originally, the Zephyr was very much focused at the military market. So I would say the military surveillance, uh, electrical, optical, infrared, and what have you. And then a little bit, obviously, on the communications, mainly because it's flying at 70,000 feet. So just by being static at that, you produce a massive ground base where you've got an unimpeded communication paths. Then what's happened, it's been quite a remarkable journey. The commercial sector started to take advantage of this and some of the things that are quite interesting is like bushfire detection and then bushfire monitoring, which is obviously a big, big problem in certain countries around the world. Then we've got piracy on the maritime space, again, and then we've had quite interesting in the new telco generation where they want to put uh, LTE 5G type of capability in areas where there isn't the, the normal ground infrastructure um, to be able to provide communications to the masses so what they want to do is we're a hook in the sky we put a payload on and then just by flying at that altitude unimpeded we can provide the capability and uh, that's why one of the reasons why you guys call this a pseudo satellite. Give us a sense for the size of the aircraft. You mentioned 70,000 feet. How much payload are you able to, to take up and, and how large of an aircraft is it? Because it's entirely solar powered. Yes, absolutely. So at the moment, the, the, the current production uh, beast is 25 meters tip to tip. And it carries a payload of five kilograms. Now that doesn't sound a great deal, but Zephyr is unique as we all know. The payload is totally different. So we do not need the traditional heavy casing, gimbal, shockproof protection or what have you, which is a considerable amount of mass that's added to a, a particular type of sensor. So when we remove all of that, we get down to something that's really, really useful. So just to give you an idea, we've had payloads that have been given to us in the past, which are weighed about 14 in excess of 14 kilos. When we stripped off all the unnecessary weight, we've got down to four kilos. Now we've looked at the market and we've looked at commercial, small companies and what have you, and they're coming up with payloads with tremendous capability for less than two kilos. So that's that one. What we've also done is invested quite heavily in the battery technology because the solar cell technology, what we've got at the moment, is the best on the market and it's as good for what we need for the foreseeable future. So much so, at the moment, even with the current version, we do not have to cover the whole of the platform with the solar array because we would be s s creating energy which we can't store. So the big push is on the battery technology, which we've done. So the previous versions of this still hold the world record 14 days and 14 nights just a change of the battery technology we're going to 30 days 30 nights so we're going to blow our world record and then we're actually looking at battery technology at the moment which will go to 120 days again no change in the structure no change in the platform or anything like that just to change the batteries as the technology matures in the market when we look at the Zephyr T, which is a slightly bigger beast, that's 33 meters. Now, okay, it looks fundamentally different because it's got two tails on it. But the structure, the fabrication, the materials are all exactly the same. 
The avionics, the flight control system is exactly the same. And I'm going to be quite crude. By both, what we basically do is cut it in half, add an extra 10 metres of wing, pull it back together again, put an extra tip uh, tail on it to give us the stability. And then all of a sudden we boost our payload capacity to an excess of 20 kilograms. That is just an absolute weight feast for you, Steve. Unbelievable. And what is really remarkable, on the Zephyrs S, which is the current version, over its world record holder, we've added an extra two meters in the wingspan, but we've reduced the weight by 20%. So the all up weight of this beast now, <laughs> payload, batteries, the whole 65 kilos is the maximum weight we will get to. So that is phenomenal. So let's talk a little bit about the market because this is a unique thing, but it's also the kind of thing that if it catches on, even as a battlefield communications relay, huge market for that. Absolutely. Obviously, you put seven watts up that high, you get an enormous amount of coverage. It's even superior to a satellite in some cases. UK government has bought three of them. That gives you sort of a nice core launch customer. Talk to us about what price point you're shooting at because this is both price sensitive but could be price insensitive market. And how many units are out there? for a system like this. Right, so what we're doing at the moment is driving the cost down by looking at uh, the way that we produce these because up until now we've been producing them from a development point of view. We've not been considering it from the what I would call the mass manufacturing. So now Airbus has given us the funding to be able to look at dedicated facilities to produce these in volumes so the price comes down and obviously we can meet the market expectations. That's going to take us a little while but uh, we will be building a hell of a lot more next year. We're talking about possibly up to 50 next year for the potential market. We've already got quite a lot of interest worldwide, very strong in America, there's no doubt about it, both in the governmental and the military sector. Um, and in other countries as well, there's a keen interest to have that unique capability. And what they're looking at, it's interesting because what they're saying is it's not removing the use of satellites and traditional UAVs. What they're trying to do is make them more cost effective. So if you're going to use a UAV, use it either to do very, very detailed surveillance and obviously use it as an effector, you know, when you know what you've got to hit and you're absolutely certain you're going to hit the right place, then you would send it in on a mission. Satellite communication you would use, from a, uh, sorry, satellite surveillance you would use as a strategic global type of capability, but then when you want to monitor the pattern of life day by day, week after week, that's the sort of information that people want. What we're now getting is a big interest in smart cities. So what they're looking at is surveillance and monitoring of um, capabilities over a city. Things like the amount of traffic movement on a, on a given day at a given time. Then, when the traffic stops, whoa, hang on a minute, why? Then that information needs to be sent to the right authorities to take the right corrective action. What we've also been given, which is a, a quite an interesting market, is bushfire. Bushfire detection, and the earlier that you can detect a fire, then obviously you're putting less people's lives at risk. The cost of obviously putting that in, uh, resolving the fire at the early stage is a lot, lot cost more cheaper to do it. And then when it does catch fire, being able to have eyes on and monitor exactly where it's going, how quickly it's growing and what have you. And then obviously when these fires do happen, they happen in fairly remote areas. So the emergency services need to be able to coordinate themselves. So if we can provide the communications in that zone and provide the data down to the people on the ground which need it instantly, then that is a pretty impressive beneficial candidate for what we can use the Zephyr for. Steve, thanks very much. Best of luck on the program and looking forward to you seeing the Break That 50 mark. That would be an amazing thing next it year. It certainly would. Thank you very much indeed.